Greetings everyone, and Great here for another H Powers 4 replay. So on the south side is the Yellow Mongols, we have 1402. On the north side is the Orange Holy Roman Empire, we have Kill Jardy. Let's see now, economic benefits. The Mongols have very little economic benefits. They do, of course, do not require any housing, which is very good. But that's basically the of it. Most people do not go for the advanced research when it comes to the uh, ears. So, most likely this will not come in, in the play. Novo does provide a small stone generation. As of right now, just one spearman per minute, which is not a thing too significant. I was going to herd these deer with the gear. I don't think I've ever seen this, but deer do collect faster than sheep. And he is going for an early pasture spell. It's not iron for aggression, so that wood is meant for a pasture to get a nice storage of sheep there. Asking some more villagers on gold, first three at the moment. And over here, Holy Roman Empire, they do have a powerful economic benefits. Early on, just the prelate does give individual villagers plus 40 gathering rate, which is significant. And of course, there is the same at Aachen Chapel. The Aachen Chapel is probably the most powerful Middle Age landmark, in my opinion, providing a 40% gathering rate around it. So, he could have deployed out more over here, which will help him aid and put up the gold and the wood. The food can always pull out farms, get faster food collection rate, or move the sheep over there if he didn't bump them, most of them. But this will allow him to collect the food very quickly, but only that. He could actually maybe deploy it right here. So he can go ahead and get the deer and the gold collected faster, but I guess he wanna use it as also a drop off point for the deer. We do, of course, have the silver tree. Definitely the better of the two Mongol age two landmarks, but it is a double edged sword because then you have a very exposed trade you have to keep uh, track of the entire game. However, this map is a little bit better for us with the high ledges here. It does construct some tr movement. A couple openings over here when it comes to wood. And there's some spread trees there to help restrict some movement, but of course you can't to pull out Palisade Gates. Now do you have the stable going on up? It does have enough stone for some Keshiks, so maybe I have to invest some stone for Keshiks. You'll soon have enough stone. Keshiks are 200. So it'll take 200 stone for them. Got the arrow arrow being put on the field. Gain some good damage down the villagers. And does go and bop himself a sheep. Now trying to bop himself another sheep there. Does bop two sheep. Uh, and yet, you still need those sheep as Mongols. Let's pull off Scouting Falcon there. Now I'm trying to run away. Silver Tree has redeployed way down here. And now here comes the time to Keshix. He has about the Aachen Chapel here. The Aachen Chapel actually makes it a good raiding target for the Mongols because it's nice to open and expose. The Holy Roman Empire player does know about the Keshix, so he deploys on some spearmen nice and early. Now let's talk about unique units that each uh, player can play out in Fetal Age. Keshik, a cheaper, heavy horseman. It has less damage, less health, but still maintains the 3 3 armor. And of course, you got also the Magadai, one of the worst unique units in the entire game. It is very, very, very situational and most times just not useful whatsoever. It only becomes somewhat useful in Imperial Age when you get it fully kitted out with all the research, including the plus two damage using a stone. And that's about it. It has very little usage throughout the entire game. There's a good number of spearmen there. Did he actually get a spearmen hit there? Wait. Yeah, I think it almost looked like he got a spearman hit there. Maybe he did. Maybe just right on replay. We've got the Regnigas Cathedral on the Blood Field. Fast Castle of the Holy Realm Empire. Pretty standard. And right now, when, he sees, when the Mongol player sees us, he's going to need to camp those relics. The Mongol player has invested quite a bit into the Ashix there. With a four plus 40% gathering rate around the Aachen Chapel. It's really hard to contend with that. Got a pair of archers on point field. Let's get a damn bit damage there. If the archers take hits there, they can actually be good for Keshix so they can engage in developing staff. Let's get one of the spearmen there. Archers may just want to run away, and now the villagers are exposed. Most forest puppers have been claimed. 
does have the force there. Get a bit of help to Jen. One's a little bit wounded. Maybe we'll find his gold. Nope, he will not. The archers, those that didn't set of archers. Those, both the archers did, in fact, go down there. And it's going to take time to bop these sheep that he has so had back at home. He does want the Regnes Cathedral there. Trying to go for some of these villagers. Or, no, trying to go for the woodline? Uh, or just take a really bad path. Keshets, they can't stand around the council with arrows like real nice. The health is far too low for that. Now we've got a fast castle. He needs to make sure to deny those relics to his opponent. The Regnes Cathedral can provide quite a bit of gold collection there with those relics. Warch is being put on the field. Very good. This mate and all these archers of the field could corral his one back at the face. Let's use the arrow arrow there, but honestly, probably should have done the speed arrow because right now it's these archers have trouble maintaining their this uh, range. And the arrow and the unupgraded arrow by a second uh, increased attack speed is actually not that good. The movement speed would have been better there. And here's one of my big criticism when it comes to Mongol players. They don't go for whistling arrow upgrades soon enough. It's one of the things you should get out very soon because 10 seconds or even tw or the improved 12 seconds like I like to go for is incredibly good. Now we have knights now upon the field. He needs to make sure those archers take up those spearmen so Keshe can engage those lancers or knights. The knights are in low enough numbers he can be the Keshe can engage them even though very out of quality. Uh, and some of these archers get rallied in a bad direction there. There's this archers there, and seeing this times two archers, he's spending all the stone on archers. Or they could be just queued up together. Actually, they may be just queued up together, but they could still be times two archers, because he groups of them. Alright, these villagers now, very good. One of the villagers do go down. Any these catches that start throwing some force there onto the Arkin Chapel can be very good. Not to just get damage onto it, but actually just for the health regen. The Mongol player is going for some pierce damage. He's not eyeing to age up anytime soon. He's using the arrow arrow there. That's since they're now maintaining range, they're able to get some extra arrows off. Very good. And now all of those archers do go down. Ashix do go down as well. And he's missing far too much of these archers. He sees all these knights upon the field. He's going for Magadai. Magadai suck. He should not be building Magadai. So right now, Magadai, they do have good attack speed. But the range is pitiful. Knights will outspeed them. Yep, knights outspeed them. Especially with their charge attack. And these Magadai will do one damage versus knights. They have five damage. These knights have four inherent pierce armor. Or does get plus one pierce damage now, so now they get two damage per arrow. But that can easily be countered by one level of upgrade of uh, pierce ar uh, armor. Bang and I are a horrendous choice in this moment. He needs spearmen. They offer no real damage support for, for the catch as well, engaging these knights as well. Does, and doesn't have any spearmen in order to protect his trade line either. When I play Mongols, I make sure I get spearmen at the beginning and end part of my uh, trade line. Just for protection against these uh, potential horsemen raids, or in this case, knight raids. These Keshiks and Mag Magadai cannot win versus these knights. He needs to focus on this knight and then focus fire these ones. He may have enough force here to stop those knights, but... Let's pick up that knight there. The, the, these traders will start going down. The knights take no prisoners versus traders. This trader needs to back on off. He does have a couple Magadai here. But still take a spearman there. Can start getting some arrows on these villagers. Spearman does get a hit there. Does got a couple of spearmen, that's about it. New con has risen, does lose another traitor there. Next one charging forward. Now 
now we finally got some uh, spearmen pulled out by the Mongol player. Megadai has gone down there. Probably died to a spearman. Because they're the combat spent a spearman, they actually keep pace with Magandai pretty well. Seeing his fight against Holy Roman Empire, which also can get marching drills for the spearman. Knights of Napoleon back. Knights just simply weren't in large enough numbers. Got this outpost starting to get hit. This villager there. I guess that was the one that built this outpost. And now he's trying to transition his trade line to this other direction. It's more dangerous. But his opponent is just going to A move directly to the silver tree. He knows where that's at, and now he's keeping the silver tree itself. And it's a big problem with the silver tree. It is double edged sword. All those towns that just cost more wood. They cost 900 wood. So it's very hard for Mongols to get out additional town centers because not only it costs uh, more resources, it's also wood. And it is not fun moving these gears around. It is very, needs some big quality of life changes there. Turn up this way forward. They need to camp the start and end point of each location. You gotta put five spearmen in each spot, I would say. Now he does have the increased damage there, so we're going to get the veteran research for the Magadai and for cash ships. Okay, they're not really scratching the knights whatsoever. His opponent has not gone for any pierced armor research either. The Magadai research with the... Could get up to some the veteran Magadai research and the pierce damage research will help him quite a bit since his opponent has not pulled down pierce armor research. They can get up the six pierce armor. Another knight does go down. He needs to make sure to keep garrison spearmen here. He does put them in patrol move. Very good. Let's find some exposed villager there. So we got very lucky there. Veteran the Magadai will eventually get up to eight damage each. Good hits there on the Mega Dive with a charge. It's just a nice have not to pull out any armor there. Spearman being closed on in. Yep, yeah, uh, only a couple of Mega Dive are now remaining one of the con. This opponent has not pulled out any Pierce Armor research. They actually do okay damage versus these knights. Because simply his opponent's not properly countering them. Though yet yeah, he still doing a good job engaging them, that's for sure. Control by has been put out here, which will give a plus 20% damage bonus, which will only increase the damage of these Magadai by 1, not by 2. Now they'll get some good healing regeneration, that's very important there. Orange trying to capture some of these relics. Orange has cleaned up 3 relics, and 4th one on the way. This 4th still needs a lot of healing there. He has a handful of Magadai, the Magadai needs to focus on the spear, the curl, the kitchen needs to advance along this direction there, try to go for a charge there, packs on up, does not have increased movement speed there, and we'll be able to trap it very soon, there you go, does get trapped there, does take off that monk there, our prayer lift, and he's going towards on the curl tie, so he's going to start engaging the opponent's base, which actually is a good opportunity, Magadai are pretty good versus villagers, that's the one thing they're good at. Villagers and traders, that's it. Because you can just simply order a move order through a farming line and they will do some good work versus villagers. Good moment, soon as starting to go on down. Probably half now has now been fully destroyed. And those Magadai and Kashyx do go down as well. Those have withdrawn from the the Aachen Chapel. The Keshik sort of in their engagement as Magadai start running running through the fields. I wonder what uh, research has here. No research whatsoever. Recently, I've been more and more frowning on the raid bounties. Because in order for this raid bounty to pay for itself, you need to raid seven structures, and that's just something that paid for itself. If you want to get any profit, you have to destroy more than eight structures. It actually is incredibly tough. 
Sure, the improved raid bounty allows you to convert stone into other resources, so it makes a bit better there. But honestly, raid bounty is not really worth for technology. The stone raid bounty is generally fine because of the fact that you get your precious stone from it. But that's about it. That's spear, multiple patrols of spearmen, very good. And outposts were there as well, so now these traders are doing good work. How many traders do you have at the moment? Not 15 yet, so it doesn't get the full benefits. It's only good benefits. Going for an outpost here, which helps improve the movement speed of these cavalry units. Spearmen are now engaging. He needs to hit this other group of spearmen pushing down south. He may lose some of these traders there. He's charging here. One trader does go down. These knights are actually a little bit wounded. He does have five spearmen here. So that's enough spearmen to deal with these knights. They just need to be a move all the way over here. Take this group of spearmen, a move over here, and squeeze those raiding knights. Let's get a hit there, very good. Let's have an unpatch there, and he does a good job in placement of the pastures, though. I would probably keep them all in one spot, so the villagers will potentially run around less this way. As well as get out an outpost here for the Yam network. But he does put in power in between the town center and of the pastures, which makes it so there's less chance they run around the pasture itself. Outpost is currently firing away. I'm not sure what scares him the inside. Those are the Mongol spearmen. Are slightly better quality. They do have a bit more pierce arm, uh, hack armor. And he's just hardened spearmen, not better spearmen. I just come for a charge there. Just get one of them killed off there. Got some mana arms in front of the field, some early mana arms. Right now, the Mogul player has more civilians on the field thanks to the Silver Tree. His opponent has not deployed out any town center, and heavy line the Austin Chapel and overall poorly placing a lot of his farms. He needs to put some mills in the mix of all this to just drop off distance. Starting to play four there, very good. Got more of these nice way forward. He does have them spotted, just more than not, he realized he actually has them spotted. This trader will go down. The Pearl Pass trying to be repaired on up. They'll just try to pull out a keep here and which the speed limit here to stop them. Knights are way down here, so it's like actually the knights may not have vision. He does have vision, but they're out the the aggression range. That's not to keep from being pulled on field. The whole remaining Mega Dyer on the field. And looks like uh, the Holy Empire player backs out of the game. As Anne Grade saying, thank you for watching, and on to next replay.